Do you know how many entries they had? Uh, 57 to 43, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. How, what was their score? Well, they won by 22, uh, 77. Yeah. yeah, 77 from 57 entries. Yeah. Well, there was well, a period... pretty good. Yeah. So you put yeah. it down to our back line. Yeah, uh, well... We kept it at 77 points. Yeah, that's And fair. they had to defend a lot of threatening balls. Yeah. Zane Cordy and Alex Keith stayed on the whole game, mm. you know, against their key forwards. I mean, what, how, how good was Alex Keith? And did Zane have his hand full on Lynch? Absolutely. He did some good stuff early, and but as I said, he didn't get the help throughout the course of the night. Welcome back to Footy Classified. Yes, getting a little testy there was the Western Bulldogs coach, Luke Beveridge. Uh, it was their first major test against the reigning Premier's Matthew Lloyd. Did they fail it? I think they did fail it, Sam. Uh, you just look at this. Uh, they've been a, had a dominant year. And you look at that one in round two. They won by seven points against the West Coast Eagles. And I thought they had their hands full. I know Gardner and Bailey Williams were playing in that game. And Williams did some great things late in that game against West Coast. But they still looked really vulnerable in the air. And... I know you love your players and you probably see things differently to media people in what you see in a game of football, but I saw trouble back there. I saw Cordy scrambling against Tom Lynch and I saw Keith. Keith was OK on Revolt, but Revolt played a great role for his team on the night. So uh, I just don't think they have the quality power defender that the other you know, potential premiership sides do. You've mentioned Gardner and Williams already, Lord. And I know that Gardner's not the biggest name in the, at that footy club, but he, structurally he's quite important. If he was available alongside Williams for that game against Richmond, would it have been a different story? Uh, the English ones as well is important as well. So the way he drops English, the way he gets back and forward, will support them. I think he's a little bit mischievous pointing to the score as well when they kicked 11-11. Um, Richmond yep. as well. So they had a lot of shots. Lynch kicked 3-5. The scoreboard could have looked a little bit uglier than what it did. But they never really explained why they let go of Jordan Roughhead. Ne never made sense to me. And they never ha really had a reason for it. And he would fill that hole perfectly at the moment. I mean... Yeah, yeah it'd be handy. Yeah, that, that point to the fact that they're coming to that game at halftime. They're the hottest team in the competition. So it hasn't... I yep. think it's significantly hurt them. It's not, a, it's not a massive blow. I think they'll be OK. I'm still comfortable with where they're at. They will show that first half they've taken it to the reigning Premier in a big, big way. Yep. Yes, they could regroup and Richmond press the button and, and smash them in the second half in various ways and they made some changes, but they'd still be pretty comfortable where they're at. Yeah, press the button is a good way of describing it, uh, Kane, because, Lloyd, in that third quarter, some of these numbers were astronomical. Yeah, I heard Shane Edwards in the build-up to this game say it's, um, it's exciting to be the Hunters for once. Yep. So they went after a side in the Western Bulldogs and the scoreboard probably flattered the Dogs in the first half because of the misses from Richmond but a plus 16 inside 50s. I thought Nan Curvis was ginormous in this quarter. I think he's been one of the great recruits of the last decade of mm. what he's done for Richmond since he's come to the club. Three premierships. If he wasn't there I don't think they'd win premierships without uh, Toby Nankervis. That's how important he's been for Richmond. Uh, and I just thought the improvement of Bolton. Bolter was back to his best. Uh, it was an awesome display against the powerhouse of the Dogs. Those numbers there, they're isolated obviously for yeah. 21 minutes of one quarter of seven matches. But are they cause for a complete rethink on where they may think they are at, the Bulldogs, when it comes to potentially winning a flag this year? Uh, not for me. You can't be up all the time. Mm. Uh, yeah, they, they got overwhelmed and swarmed, which will be a, a great lesson for Luke Beveridge and his players to handle it better next time, Damo. It's an intriguing scenario, uh, Damo, around the number one pick, Jamara Eugle Hagen, who is being made to work for his debut at the Western Bulldogs. And Luke Beveridge was asked about that again in what was a pretty dramatic press conference after the game. You just persist with these questions about Jamara, don't you? <laughs> Did you hear my press conference the other day? <laughs> no, I didn't. Well, can you guys just listen to press conferences so you don't keep asking the same questions? Because I've, I've, I've answered this question, I know it seems like I'm getting defensive, but when you answer the same question every time I'm in a room with you guys, I mean, you've got, you got, you got to imagine that it, it gets frustrating because you guys don't do your research, you don't, you don't look at what's happening. That is uh, that is a testy exchange. And the use of the word defensive there by, by Luke Beveridge, he, he was. Um, he had no reason to be. I think the question from Lonnie Luna was valid, given that they chose to go into a game with Josh Shackey, who, who didn't perform in the, in the role that he wanted him to perform in that particular game. Um, whatever he said during the week about Jamara Eugle Hagen is null and void on, at that moment, being a post-match press conference. And the, the questions will what? continue to be asked about Jamara Eugle Hagen, what? as they should be. Why don't you think they picked him, Dama? Well, he's not ready. He's not ready in Luke Beveridge's eyes. That's, that's been expressed to Jamara Eugle Hagen. He's not, his body's not ready. And, and I, I would hazard a guess that there's other parts of his makeup that, in Luke Beveridge's eyes, don't have him ready just now. He's not far off. He's a young kid. He's living life. He's having a, a good time. And that's uh, all well and well, good. But Luke Beveridge has said he's preparing him to succeed. 
that's his right. And if he thinks he's not ready in the first seven rounds, it may take a few more beyond that because he only managed to well, get, get nine. Used to it. He's, got to, he's got to get used to it. Like That, that reaction does. was extreme. Yeah. Like How many times do you think Alistair Clarkson was asked, asked about Buddy Franklin? How many times is John Longmire still to this day, 17 years into Franklin's <laughs> career, asked about Franklin? Number one draft pick. High talent, uh, who knows, could be anything. He's going to be asked about him every week, so get used to it. And to think that a journo would go and listen back to every Luke Beveridge press conference was arrogance in, in my mind. Information changed. Josh Shackey didn't touch it. Yep. They lost. Of course the question is going to be asked, and he should have been more respectful and expected the question to, to be asked. Yeah, also, if they had listened to every second of every press conference, you're still allowed to ask Information the same changed. Question. You're still allowed to go back to it. I mean, that's the whole point of the press conferences. Um, 